Hey guys, I'm going to go through a breakdown of this Night Harbor render that I had created. I will be focusing on a general overview of how I built up the scene, as well as an insight into my own thoughts. So one day I came across this ship at sea time lapse video on YouTube. And as we was docking, I was so inspired by the environment and the feeling of being there. If you think about it, it's such a unique environment and place to have all the shipping containers and docks and that's truly what inspired me to pursue some sort of recreation of this feeling I had. Then I headed to Google to refine my ideas by searching up specific pictures, especially at night. I was really inspired by the colors contrasting in the water at night. And with all the images I collected and explored, I put them all into this reference application called PureRef. And so I chose this particular image as my primary source of reference for my shot. I started by creating the ship first since it was going to be the focus of the shot. Creating a ship is actually easier than it looks. All it involves is some extruding, scaling using edge loops, a little bit of beveling and a lot of reference, and you've got yourself a ship. I always try to grab image textures from textures.com because they always have hundreds of different options to choose from. I particularly like this dirty concrete one because it really fits the ship really well. It has some watermarks as if it's been roughed up. I overlaid this with a custom color ramp set to black and red and that is like defined by a gradient texture and a texture coordinate and that just gives me control over where the color most of the time you can also use the original image texture as your roughness and specular maps since there are details on that color map that can be used. To displace the ship I used a bump node controlled by the mix of a wave texture and musgrave texture. This is to simulate as if the ship was built by large metal sheets that are like kind of like stitched together. We learned this trick from Ian Hubert himself. I also think the control building is quite straightforward to model. It is a bunch of edge loops and extruding and figuring out what works using wireframe modifiers to build up detail. Again, be sure to look at a lot of reference for this. That usually helps you get the right sense of idea of what to extrude and inset. Sometimes you can just put random objects or extrusions and it will look like a thing. Textures again, I used a metal gray tea texture to define it and it ends up working fine at a distance. To create the water, it is simply just a plane scaled up and what we're doing is basically defining the normal map of a glossy PSTF. We do this by connecting it to a mix of the musgrave and wave texture, again toning it down until you get that water look. Credits to Ian Hubert for that water trick, it is really handy. By this time I was already interested in building the basic blocks of the composition. I really wanted to just get in the field and get in there create a camera, just get a shot in my mind, and then develop the details from there. Here I added in three cylinders because I wanted there to be a contrast in the depth of field and parallax. This is also a good time to set up your animations. This, this includes your camera movement, but it can be controlled by the Z location. I will link to an Ian Huber tutorial in the description. Then it's time to add an environment texture in order to see how the general lighting is going to look. Then it's just about filling in the details in the background. Here I prioritized on working on the cranes, which are just simple cubes, working with mirror modifiers to speed things up. matching up geometry with certain bits of texture so they look more realistic. Adding textures to the grounds. For the sides right here, I decided to mix it with my original dirty concrete. I also used the images as planes add-on to add a basic night sky that I found from Google. Specifically for the foreground, to give it detail, I use PBR texture that do come with actual bump maps. Again, I use the dirty concrete texture 
inside. Modeling the cylinder things isn't hard. It's using proportional editing, scale, use a lot of reference again. It's just about building interesting objects. This rust image powers the roughness and bump. I then wanted to add metal chains that were going around the cylinders as if they were like tied around something. And I'll link another tutorial where I learned how to do it. I wanted more detail in the foreground. So I resolved to finding rock photo scans and using that to randomize, scale, rotate, create interesting variations. The composition is really looking good now. Now it was time to add the shipping containers, which are basic image textures attached to a cuboid. Then I used this trick I learned where I can actually randomize the color of the ship to my liking and when I duplicate it, it will generate a different color. After that, it is really simple, just duplicating, making sure things work, building up the background, adding details and specific shots. Here yeah, I added in a lamp because it was really easy and I just put that everywhere. And here in cycles, it's already looking really, really good, as you can see. A good thing to do with any render is to try to make it more cinematic by adding a layer of fog, and this can be done with volume scatter. I also animated the depth of field by parenting it to a null that I can then just animate the position that I then use to guide the focus. And originally I would produce render passes at different stages in my progress. And you can see how my image refined to what I would consider my final image. It's a lot of tweaking, a lot of feeling what looks right. Now with a little bit more effort and post-processing, you'll be able to add in more details. It's about drawing your inspirations into actual ideas and representations. Now I know this breakdown is not exactly a step-by-step -step tutorial and I've glanced over a lot of technical aspects, which is why I've linked a lot of tutorials in the description below where you can learn how to achieve the technical part of it. Anyways, if you enjoyed this breakdown, consider subscribing because I'm really excited to make videos like this. It, it feels great making art and being able to share how you got there. And yeah, have a wonderful day.